Hey everybody, this video is about Cthulhu and a couple of quick tips for using Cthulhu with Bitwig Studio. So real briefly, if you do not know what Cthulhu is, uh, you can see I've already added it here onto a track. Cthulhu does two things. First of all, it'll turn a single MIDI note in into a chord based on whatever you've configured it with here or a preset that you've loaded. Cthulhu is also an arpeggio designer. So while there is an arpeggiation device and a multi-note device in Bitwig already, Cthulhu allows uh, quite, a, quite a few more options, which I will show you here in a second. Anyways, that's what Cthulhu is. Now, Cthulhu by itself is technically, you can think of it as a note effect. It does have a built-in synth engine just so that you can easily hear it. So you can see here, I've got this purple device, the purple speaker icon thing turned on. So if I press a key on my, on my MIDI controller, then we're getting the output. Likewise, we can arpeggiate the output. But of course, most of the use of this is gonna come from using your own devices, be it uh, software instruments or hardware instruments like the wonderful JP8080, which we'll take a look at in a second. So in order to do that, to set this up, it's fairly easy. We're gonna first turn off this sound icon here. Now there's a couple of ways that we could go about this. One is that we could wrap this Cthulhu device in a note effects layer, which would then allow us to put a virtual instrument uh, after it. I prefer adding my instruments as a separate track and then doing routing. It's up to you. I like to do it this way because then I can capture the MIDI out a lot easier, but it's your choice. So when you first set this up, um, of course, so we don't, we're not hearing our chords there. And if I set the recording to just Cthulhu, we don't hear anything. There's two things that you need to do. If you just want to hear it, what you want to do is add a note receiver device here, right before whatever virtual instrument you're going to use. And we just want to select the Cthulhu device. Make sure that that's armed so that the MIDI is going to that track. Okay, so that will just allow you to take notes from Cthulhu and route them into whatever instrument is your choosing. Now, the other thing that is probably something that you're going to want to do is, let's say that you want to record the MIDI coming out of this arpeggiator because you want to mess around with it or because you want to make a clip here in the uh, clip view. So if we did that, watch what happens here. So you might have noticed something, which is if we look at this clip, we're not getting the chord and we're not getting the arpeggiation. Instead, we're getting the keys that I have very sloppily pressed on my MIDI controller. The reason for that is because this note receiver device will simply take the MIDI notes and it will send it into the device. It's not actually bringing the MIDI data onto this track. You have to do that separately by selecting the track and then over here, we can pick what MIDI data we want to bring in. So I'll pick this one and then let's go ahead and record. And there you can see that we're getting the MIDI data as we expect. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up a couple of things here. Let me just walk you through the changes that I've done. Of course, we still have Cthulhu here. I have added two clips. And this is just a little bit of note, uh, MIDI note data to trigger Cthulhu so that I don't have to keep pressing the MIDI controller as we go. I have also configured the JP8080. I've selected a patch on it. It's ready to go. Uh, the, you can see here I'm using the hardware instrument device. That's how we're able to control this from Bitwig. I've added a couple of effects on here. This is a new one I just got. This is free polyverse wider. It gives a little bit of a stereo effect. And as you can see, I have a slow LFO that is moving that stereo effect in and out. Delay 2 by Bitwig, and lastly, a little bit of reverb by Native Instruments Room. All right, so there you can hear a bit about what it sounds like. Uh, fairly simple setup so far. What I want to show you is a neat feature that I just discovered a couple of weeks ago and have been making a lot of use of. So up here we have the Arpeggio Designer. You can see I've I've changed the, the width. You can have a different amount of notes. I've been finding it pretty fun to set an auto map. You can turn off a note. 
Each of these purple sliders, you can move up and down to specify a node. So three in this case means it'll always play the third note of the chord and the seven. That's pretty cool. But the feature that I just discovered was this here, which is these letters allow you to have multiple arpeggio patterns. And if you noticed, as I'm changing the letter here, down here, Bitwig is actually changing it on the device. And because the VST exposes this, we can both automate it using the arrangement view, or we can use a modulator on it, which is, I think, pretty cool. So let's just make a couple of patterns here real quick. So I've got this one. I'll copy that pattern, and I'll paste it here. And let's maybe make it a little longer. I'll make one more. Let's make a shorter one. All right. So I've got one that's five, one that's, what is that, about seven, and one that is three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a modulator here, but of course you could, you could always, on this, you could add an automation lane if you're, if you're doing arrangement and simply use the value here to set what you want it to be. But what I'm gonna use is a modulator. I have found the step sequencer is a good one for this, but obviously you can use other ones as well. So uh, let's just, I'm gonna make it a little shorter. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do 13 steps. And the duration here is important because if it's too fast, well, I'll let you hear what happens when it's too fast. So back here in Bitwig, we only have, I mean, in Cthulhu, we only have three. And what I typically do is I'll set it to the highest pattern to see where that comes to. Because what we'll want to do is when we set the modulation, we'll set it, I'm just eyeballing it, about, about to where C comes to. So here's what happens if you do this too fast. It's not really much of a... So there's not really much of an effect. Um, I have found that either somewhere between one to four bars, depending on what you're doing, is about right. So let's just do two bars. And so you can see what happens there is we don't just get a static arpeggio. There's, there's things that are happening and moving. And what's really neat, the reason that I've got the launch pad set up, let me, let me drag out some more lines here. The reason I've got the launch pad set up is because this will keep going even if we change what clip we're playing. So yeah, that can be really fun. Um, let's add a drum machine in real quick, and uh, that's the basic idea here.
Oh, I am doing 30 second notes. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, lots of fun can be had with this. Hope you come up with some interesting ideas uh, for yourself as well. Have fun.